Hello YouTube, it's me, your boy B3, back with another kicking graphic novel review. Got a cool trade for you guys today, one I've been wanting to read for a while. I actually got the whole run, so I'll be doing every volume of it. Batman The Dark Knight, Volume 1, Night Terrors. That's night with a K. Uh, pretty cool, this was just a short Batman series that came about in the New 52. Ran alongside Batman and Detective Comics, but I don't think it crossed over with them at any point. I know it didn't cross over with Batman, because I was reading Batman. Uh, Detective Comics, I'm going to start doing soon. In fact, the next review will probably be New 52 Detective Comics. But today we're doing The Dark Knight. Um, I'm going to read you the back. Something evil this way comes. Something sinister is stirring in the veins of Arkham Asylum's inmates, psychotic and throthing with fiendish strength. They are unleashed onto the streets of Gotham. The Dark Knight must do everything in his power to protect the people and unmask the culprit behind the mayhem. Will Batman survive the onslaught of maniacal attacks from Scarecrow and Bane to Two-Face and the Court of Owls long enough to uncover the truth at the end of the rabbit hole? For things are not quite as they seem. Yeah, and you gotta read the next volume to figure out more, I guess, because it doesn't totally explain everything. Um, so the White Rabbit's running around. Batman's chasing her through all these crime scenes, past all these villains, uh, because he knows she's connected to whatever this psychotic thing is. The bunch of prisoners were released from Arkham, um, and, and Two-Face was in Arkham, right? But he was all hopped up on something that made his adrenaline go so fast that he didn't, um, feel fear. But it also made him super buff. So, I mean, the two villains that come to mind would be Scarecrow and Bane. And Scarecrow's not much of a reveal, but they play Bane off like it's some big reveal when they show Bane. But it's, like, really obvious Bane's part of it because of all the buff villains and the green fluids. Uh... But whatever. And Internal Affairs is on Gordon's ass for working with the Batman. Uh, Poison, <laughs> Poison Ivy has been abducted from the Birds of Prey uh, and is missing. And then you got Clayface impersonating the Joker. Uh, but it turns out Poison Ivy is being used to create stuff. And it's got lots of Justice League members in this. You see Wonder Woman communicating with Batman. She's rounding up Arkham people. You see the Flash. He's trying to help Batman, but then he gets poisoned, so he has to run to metabolize the poison. You see Superman takes down Batman after Batman is injected with the toxin. Uh, so you see lots of other heroes, really, which is really cool, actually. Uh, but all kinds of villains are in this book. A lot of villains are in this book. Scarecrow, White Rabbit, uh, Great White, Got fucking Two-Face, Bane, Clayface, all kinds of villains in this book. So many villains. Uh, but yeah, he eventually takes everyone down, except the White Rabbit who escapes. And it turns out the White Rabbit is the woman Bruce Wayne has started seeing, sort of. Uh, I wasn't sure that woman would have anything to do with the White Rabbit, though, because they're... The same person, but they're also different ethnicities. <laughs> it's like a superpower. She can create a doppelganger of herself in white rabbit lingerie. Uh, who is a white person. Yeah. So that's that's a superpower she has for some reason. Uh, and then there's a little story after that. Um, about people who were found killing each other in a subway train. All these bodies were found and the people had killed each other. Tweedledum and Tweedledee show up. Uh, from the rhetoric, it's really obvious that Mad Hatter is the villain, especially when you see Tweedledum and Tweedledee, because they're Alice in Wonderland characters and they're usually seen as henchmen, oftentimes for the Mad Hatter. And we just had the White Rabbit in a previous story. It doesn't say that the uh, White Rabbit and Mad Hatter are connected in any way, but uh, yeah, so Mad Hatter's broadcasting this signal that makes people crazy and animalistic, so they'll murder each other, because he's a psychopath. And then we have this pretty cool story about the Talon that tried to assassinate Lincoln March. Remember Lincoln March in the, uh, Batman Volume 1 and Batman Volume 2? If you haven't read Batman's Volume 1 and 2, I did review them. I think I reviewed Volume 2. Definitely reviewed Volume 1, but I'm pretty sure I reviewed Volume 2 also, so check them out. Uh, pretty sure I reviewed Volume 2. And it's about that talent, 
and his life, how he became a talent and everything, which is pretty standard. You know, he was recruited from Haley's Circus, but he's an old talent. He's a really old talent, and he's starting to, like, slip up. He's not as good at his job anymore, and the Court of Owls retired him until the Night of the Owls when they released all the talents. And now it ends with him, like, walking around on the subway all beat up and healing uh, and moving on to something else. So we're probably going to see more about that talent. We're definitely going to see more about the White Rabbit. And I actually am excited to see where it goes from here. This isn't, um, like a top-notch Batman book, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. The art's pretty good. David Finch, Paul Jenkins, Richard Freend, uh... I mean, it's pretty cool. Collects issues 1 through 9 of Batman the Dark Knight. And uh, Volume 2 will hopefully be just as good, if not better. Because it's not a bad book. I recommend it if you're a Batman fan. It's got a lot of villains. That's, that's really fun. It's fun. It's a fun book. Uh, but that's it. Thank you all very much for your support. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out all the cool links in the description below. Facebook, Twitter, etc. Remember, Batman the Dark Knight, Volume 1, Night Terrors, with a K. So that's it. Uh, next time, we will more than likely be doing Batman Detective Comics Volume 1 Faces of Death, so tune in for that. Thank you all once again for your support, and I'll see you all later.